Okay, this is uh, part two in my drawing force diagrams um, for different objects, and this is part two because this is for unbalanced forces. And um, in this case, I just drew a little example here. Here's the surface, here's the object, and these are the unbalanced forces. You can tell that these are uh, these two are equal. This is gravity and this is normal force. They're opposite. But uh, these forces are unbalanced, so overall the net force on this object is pointing to the right, and it's unbalanced. And if it's going to the right, it's beating up, and it's going to the left, it's slowing down. All right, so we talked about that earlier, but uh, I'm going to go through a little bit of that, and we'll talk about that when we do our drawings also. Okay, here's the first one. Here's an object. There's the object. It's moving to the right, and it's coming to a stop. So, therefore, uh, we got to draw the forces that would represent this, and we want to get this kind of set up. We want to, see, we want to do this first, and um, we want to have all this taken care of. Okay, so we're going to draw the forces. So, it is an object, it has mass, therefore, that's right, it has to have a gravitational force. And if it's not falling up or down, then it has to have a normal force, which is acting in the same direction as the gravitational force. So that's the gravitational force, the force due to gravity, and that's normal force. Now, this is object is moving to the right and coming to a stop. And let's see, that means it's moving to the right, that means we have to have a force that's acting to the left to actually have it cause it to come to a stop. And that's going to be that force. And we can draw that force any size we want. It could be small, it could be bigger, but this force is probably going to be friction. That's usually the force that acts between two objects, uh, this object and this hard surface that causes things to come to a stop. Usually when things come to a stop, it's because of friction, either friction or air resistance, but that's on Earth when we're here with gravity, why things come to a stop and they don't really obey Newton's first law, which says that obviously motion stay in motion, obviously rest stay rest, unless acted upon by unbalanced force, and that is our frictional force usually, which is, that's our unbalanced force. So that's it. There's no force acting to the right because it doesn't say that it's being pushed or pulled by anything. We're not pushing it, we're not pulling it. So a lot of people want to draw a force to the right, but it, there is no force to the right. So it's just that. Okay? All right. Next one. Here is an object that's moving to the left and speeding up, and it's experiencing wind resistance. So it's going this way to the left. And even before I kind of think about that too much, I'm going to draw my other forces. All right. And in this case, the other forces, because it is an object, it's got to have a gravitational force. And because it's not moving up or down, and we gotta have our normal force. Okay? Are those two equal? These two should be equal up and equal down. Okay? So that's the first thing. And that just kinda goes, that's the first thing I always do. It's got gravity. Okay? Now, <clears throat> it's moving to the left and it's speeding up. So I know I'm gonna have a force to the left because that's the force that's causing it to speed up. Like that. Now, it is experiencing wind resistance, and as I said earlier, wind resistance usually acts in the direction opposite that we're moving, so we're gonna have to have wind resistance, and we can draw this one any size we want, as long as it's smaller than this one. We can draw this one any size we want, as long as it's bigger than this one. So, well, there's nothing up here about how big the forces are, only really about the direction. So this object has a net force to the left, it's moving to the left, and it's speeding up. Even if we were to get rid of this one over here, it's still be moving to the left and speeding up, but usually when you have two, surfaces like that, this is going to be friction or wind resistance or something like this, and this says wind resistance. We could draw another one, you know, however big we want to make it, as long as the, the sum of them is smaller than that one, that could be friction. Friction, wind resistance, here's our applied force, gravitational force, and our normal force. All right? How does that look? Pretty good? Pretty good. Okay. The sum of these two is less than this one. Okay, here we go. Two objects, one is moving down, they're both moving down, one is speeding up and one is slowing down. Okay, so once again, it is an object. It does have a force, and that force, we know, is going to be gravity. So they both have gravity. I'm going to draw them both like this. And I'll try and get this one to start in the same place so it looks the same. And there's our gravitational force. Now this one is the first one, we'll call this one number one over here, is slowing down. 
So if something is falling down and it's slowing down and you want to stop it, you got to use a force bigger than the downward force. So that would be moving down, but slowing down. Now, if it's going to be moving down and speeding up, then the downward force is going to be greater than the upward force. So that, in this case, we want to draw it like this so that this one is bigger. And I just like to draw it with the arrow outside the box like that. So there we go. Here, this one is going down but slowing down. And this one is also moving downward. But because the downward force, the gravitational force is greater, it's speeding up. Okay? So I think that covers the most of the general cases. You can apply the cases I just showed you to all the cases that we talk about in class, I think, for the most part. And that brings us back to the title, Drawing Force Diagrams for Objects with Unbalanced Forces. Thank you very much.